Ever wondered what the real cost of convenience is in our digital world? Tim Jensen, host of Intentionally Inconvenient, dares to question if convenience is truly the enemy of privacy. You'll explore the essence of privacy, why it's worth pursuing, and debunk the myth that it's a lost cause. Together, you will challenge the notion of, I have nothing to hide, and reveal why every bit of your information matters. Remember, all hope is not lost. It's time to reclaim your privacy in this intentionally inconvenient reality. Hello and welcome to Intentionally Inconvenient, where we talk about securing your personal freedom through personal privacy. My name is Tim Jensen, I'm your host. Last time we talked all about passwords and, and what I really feel is needed for the best kinds of passwords. Today, we're gonna to be talking about password managers because if you're going to have uppercase letters, lowercase letters, numbers and symbols, and 20 or more characters in length for a password and using the, a different password for each account that you have, it's gonna be really, really hard to remember unless you have software or some other system that you can easily access all those different logins and passwords. So, password managers, is the standard practice that everybody in the privacy community uses today. Um, so one of, the, one of the very first things that I want to discuss is zero knowledge encryption. The password manager that you should use should have what's called zero knowledge encryption. So encryption is, is very simple. It's not readable by human beings. It's basically only machine readable. We've talked about cryptology, or we've heard about cryptology. They used to use that during uh, back in the wars, um, where they would send things encrypted over the airwaves so that their their people could understand it, but the enemy could not without the code, without the key. So zero knowledge encryption means that the company that provides the password manager service has zero knowledge of your password. They cannot reset your password. They do not have a way to access your password. They have zero knowledge of your password. The only person that has that password is you. Why is that important? Because let's say that a, a, a stranger calls in and says, hi, my name is so-and-so and I need to have my password reset on my account for my password manager. The password manager company can't do it. So we call that social engineering. That's where another person goes to pretend that they're you and they impersonate you to try to gain information from the company about you. And then they use that information, they piece it together like a little puzzle to find out who you are and what you know and what you can do. If they don't have any knowledge of your password, your master password to your password manager, guess what? They can't reset it which means that they can't change it on you and take over your account. That's very important. So you want a password manager that has zero knowledge encryption. You want to have um, the content in there encrypted with the best encryption sources in the world possible so that only you have access to that. Um, another thing that I like to recommend is that you have more than one password manager, or that you have a backup password manager from a different company. So I personally use one password. I pay for the service because I know that if the product is free, then you are the product. I don't want to be the product. I want to be the person who pays for my software so that when I use it, I know that I'm not having all this information collected on me. And when you use a free password manager, you can bet that the company that is providing the free service is collecting information about you and then they are selling it to the highest bidder or they are using it to advertise to you. They don't just give away stuff for free because they're nice people. They have a profit motive because they're in business and that is a normal way that our society works. So you wanna be paying for it. There is a software that is called Bitwarden that does have a free version that you can use for your backups or you can pay $10 a year and you can have the full access to their software. 
I use 1Password because they've got a number of uh, features, one of which is called Watchtower. Now what Watchtower does is it goes out and it finds all of the stuff on the dark web that is in relation to you. And if you, for instance, let's say you put your passwords in and I have like almost 600 passwords in my password manager. I know, I'm a little bit different but not, and there's a number of people like that. But if, if they find an account with your email address on a particular website and they find it in a database of breached data, they will notify you that your password and your login has been breached and is out there in other people's hands and then they recommend that you change it. What a great feature. So when you put all your stuff into the password manager, that's a service that's included in what you're paying for. Um, they also have sections for secure notes. They have a section where you can put all of your credit card information in if you want to. Um, all your passwords, obviously, you can mark certain ones as favorites or it will mark them for you if you use them a lot. There's a section for notes on any particular account, on any, on any particular page so that you can put notes in. Let's say that you have a website, like your email address. A lot of times when you log into your email, it will say, here are 10 login codes. They are one-time use. If you forget your password, you can use this login code as a temporary one-time use password to get in and then change your password. So you want to store those in the password manager. You don't want to ignore that. Never ignore that. You always save those and you save those in the password manager. Um, other things that you can put in there would be um, the website where the login is. That's all automatically put in there. You want to use it as a form filler. So the software password manager software will fill the forms in for you on your web page. You can put a, a profile of who you are, all the little pieces of information, your name, address, phone number, email address, your username, your password, your birth date, all that kind of stuff. And you can use the password manager as a form filler to fill in the forms on the web page so you're not spending all kinds of time. And sometimes it's like, what was that again, Ethel? What is it that I have to put in there? It's all in your password software. And the first time you have to put a particular piece of software in there, the password manager will save it for you and you'll never have to remember it again. It'll be right there. It's extremely helpful. Now, you're probably thinking to yourself, well, this goes against what you preach. Having these all-in-one convenient things, you know, convenience is the enemy of privacy. What are you talking about now, mister? Let me explain. You, this is going to be protected by a master password that you're going to store somewhere else. And this should be one of the toughest passwords ever to crack. You never use that password anywhere else. And I would store that password in a different password manager that you have either on a software or I also use this hardware key. It's called an only key. You can go crp.to and you can order these. They're 65, 66 bucks plus tax and possibly shipping. Get two of these. Why two? Because if you lose one, you want a backup. This has a code on it. You have to put the code in. Everything's encrypted on here. So it's just like the password that you have on your password software. It also has a self-destruct code. Let's say someone takes it from you and demands the code from you. You can give them the self-destruct code and it will erase it. So that there's nothing there. This has a USB uh, plug-in. You can buy adapters to plug into your phone, whether it's an iPhone or whether it's a Droid, uh, USB-C. You can buy those adapters on Amazon for like 10 bucks or 12 or whatever it is. Okay. So, this has all kinds of different things in the software that I, I use for 1Password. Bitwarden you can also use as a backup. It had the redundancy to leave yourself less vulnerable. Another thing that you want to do is you can do this if you really have zero trust in even your password manager software. And I get it. Some people have been burned in life. They just have. I've had my websites hacked into. I've had my bank account hacked into. I've had money stolen. I've had my debit card uh, information stolen. I've had my websites just wiped out. So always have backups. But for passwords, you can do something extra. Let's say you've got your 20 character password and your username in your password manager, but you want to add another seven to 10 characters after 
So you go in, you, form, you fill in the form on the website, saves there, saves that information, but what your password manager does not contain is those extra seven, eight, nine, or 10 characters extra at the end of your password for the full password. So now you know part of it, your password manager knows part of it, but nobody has the entire thing. You have control of it, but nobody has access to the entire thing. Now this is a strategy that very few people talk about. I've only heard one person, other, one other person talk about it, but this is a strategy where you just have no trust in people. You limit your trust everywhere. And this is a good way to do that because nobody has all the information. I remember I've talked about this before. I talk, you're, you're compartmentalizing the information. Some of it's here, some of it's there. But nobody knows it all. It's very important. Um, like I said, you can, it also has a, what's called a password creator. So the software itself will help you create your 20 character passwords. You, check, you tick the boxes, uppercase, lowercase, numerals, and symbols. You can tick all those and then you can drag this little thing on the, on the screen to give it the number of characters that you want your password to be. So you can tell it, I want 20 characters, I want 24 characters, I want 16 characters, whatever it is, whatever you choose. It's your password. You can do what you want. But it will help you create that. It will never give you the same password twice. When you've got 20 characters, that's going to be hard anyway. So the password manager is helpful. Again, this hardware key is very helpful. I, I, I recommend using a combination of things. What I use the hardware key for is those websites that I don't even store in the password manager or that I want uh, access to, but I don't want others to have access to. Let's say someone finds out my password, my master password for the password manager. It's highly unlikely, but it is possible. The passwords I have on here might not be in there. And it's something that I have physically gotten, so it can't be traded on the internet. And it's password protected as well, and it's encrypted on here. That's a pretty good deal. There's a lot that you can do with stuff like this. And I keep this on a keychain, and I keep it separate from all my other stuff so that if I lose the stuff, I don't lose the, the key ring. So that's what I got for today on password managers. I highly recommend you use a password manager and use it all the time. I recommend that you don't use a free one. I don't recommend that you use the browser password manager. There's a lot of browsers out there, Chrome and Firefox and so forth, that they have these built-in password managers. Most of the time, they're not encrypted. But more importantly, there's a software out there called a Stealer Log. Put it in your search engine of choice and look it up. Stealer Log. It's a stealer software. It's a robot. It comes in. It gets in through a back door, or maybe you accidentally click a link in, in that you didn't realize you shouldn't have clicked. And all of a sudden, it's installed on your computer. This can go into your browser and steal all your passwords, which are probably not encrypted. I'm guessing they're probably not. So if you keep your passwords in your browser, it's, e it's, it's easy pickings. It's low-hanging fruit for, for a thief, for someone to come in and take stuff from you. Now they have access to everything that you have in your, in your browser, in the password manager in your browser. I don't recommend that. That's why I recommend a password manager. You can use extensions. You can just go to the website and copy and paste. However you want to use it, go out there and you can look at onepassword.com. You can look at Bitwarden. Um, I've heard Mulvad is a good one. I, I have no knowledge of Mulvad. I'm sure it's probably very good. Um, there are a few that I would avoid. I would avoid LastPass because of the data breaches and because they would not encrypt it when they say that they did encrypt your password. So it was plain text that was in your password manager. I mean, geez, how easy is that? Um, I, I know that there's other ones out there that I have not mentioned, but do some research and see what you like best. I have found through my own uh, personal research that 1Password and Bitwarden are the top two to go with. And the only key, and again, that's just because it's not stored on the internet, it's not, it's not um, exchanged, you have it physically with you at all times. And always get two, always get two. Never leave yourself so vulnerable that if you lose your hardware key, your password manager physical key, that you don't have a backup. Number one, and number two, what if this fails? All, all products eventually fail. You need to have a backup. 
That's all I got for today on Intentionally Inconvenient about password managers. My, again, my name is Tim Jensen. I'm your host. Join us again next time. I hope to see you soon. Stay safe. Stay private. Thanks for listening. That's all for now from Intentionally Inconvenient, leaving you with a challenge to question the cost of online convenience. If you want to keep learning, subscribe on Spotify and Apple Podcast. Your reviews and five-star ratings help reach more listeners. Until next time, remember, your privacy is never a lost cause. Stay safe, stay private.